day. How would you like to have 200 colors with just 10 paints, 10 core paints? That's amazing. If you want to watch how this happens, keep watching because I'm going to do it. Let's do something fun today. Since we're all self-isolated and we've poured as many pictures as we care to admit, we're running out of canvases, we're organizing our paints. All right, and then the next thing we do is consider all the paints that we've bought and we take a red and a blue, just an arbitrary red and a blue, and we put them together and we get a muddy gray. And we think, well, wait a minute, this is not right. According to school, red and blue should make a pretty purple. Well, we're gonna play on some paper. This is just what I have. You, if you have something better quality, go for it. If you have like 150 or 250 uh, paper, use that. Whatever you've got. If you've got a notebook or a graph paper, graph paper would be really cool. You're just going to get some warpage, but you want to get colored down onto a chart. Now, I've got tons of colors, and I don't like probably more than half. I've got 70 pound here because this is all I've got in my house and I'm not going to go buy it. And oh look, <laughs> this is something my daughter must have done when she was little. It tells you how many years I've had this. Oh, and then she must have done a chalk drawing. I made a chart. I made that one inches by one inches and I drew the lines and then I took one of those fat markers and I just drew along the one side because this this chart is going to give me two things. I'm going to have a dominant color here. Can you read that? And then I'm going to do a mix or just a one part. So my dominant colors are going to go here just the color and then I'm gonna say okay I want to add green to white what is that gonna give me and that's that's not what we're gonna do but and then so I'm gonna then I'm gonna take two parts of the say this is white I'm gonna take two parts of the white on my brush well we'll just get into it I've got two yellows two reds two blues and I've got a burnt sienna and a burnt umber does it have to all be the same brand? No, heck no. It's all acrylic. Um, they're probably, you know, the companies are probably going to say, don't say that. Who cares? I've got this stuff in my house. Oh, let's talk about Hue for a minute. I can't afford the real stuff, so I buy the Hue. When, when you see a paint that says cadmium Hue, that means they did not use the real cadmium orange. They used something else to get that orange. So we don't know what's in here. This is not pure. But if this is all you've got, make a chart. This is so fun and so relaxing. It's very meditative, actually. <laughs> cadmium yellow light hue. So again, we don't know what's in here. It's not pure cadmium. And I've got golden's green gold just because this is almost on the purple side i want to represent all the colors that i could possibly have i mean i've got i've got tons of color but i don't like half of them because they when you mix them with something uh, they, it just doesn't i want vibrancy i want saturation um, which is from primary school you go in and they say a hue is a saturation of color without white and black. White and black is something totally different. So anyway, I've got Amsterdam, I've got Golden, I've got Grumbacher, I've got Liquitex, and that's it. for Just for this page. So the first color I'm going to lay out is the Golden... I'm going to put golden down here at the bottom. 
green, gold. You can do this any way you want, whatever colors you want. You don't have to put them in the, the range on the color wheel. I just like doing it. And now I'm going to do Liquitex, CAD, Yellow, Late. Now you say, I don't have CAD Yellow Late. I have CAD Medium. Use CAD Medium. Use whatever you've got. I'm going to mix two to one of this color and then I'm going to add all of these colors across the top and it'll be two parts green gold, two parts green gold or one part green gold, kind of like that. So now we're going to do Grumbacher Cad Orange and I'm going to write down hue so I know when I come back and look at this two years from now. I'm going to say, oh, I wonder what would happen if I went, actually went out and bought the real stuff and then do another chart. I've got, this is my light red, and it's a Pyro Amsterdam. And this is Pyro Red. Golden, you can make this as neat or as messy as you want. You don't even have to write them down if you don't want to, but I want a journal, magenta. And if I come back and read this two years from now, I'm going to think, what did I write if I abbreviate it too much? So here's my golden, primary cyan, and ultramarine blue from Amsterdam. Now, the reason why I'm using the, these three goldens is because I bought them to do paint pouring. And that's what this is all this chart is going to be all about is if I so if I say I want to take this one in ultramarine blue or or this quinacridone in ultramarine blue what am I going to get or if I take pyro red and put it with ultramarine blue what am I going to get if I put uh, ultramarine blue and green gold what am I going to get or ultramarine marine and yellow what am I going to get because uh, when I go out and I spend money on paint and I come home and I don't like the results. Yeah, the, the pictures are pretty, but are they sale worthy? No, nobody wants them. Nobody's nobody's even interested. I want something that's like vibrant and bold and and speaks. It tells a story. I want it to tell a story. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and these are both Amsterdam's. And I'm adding brown just because. Uh, Maybe I want a navy, or maybe I want, I'm all out of black. God forbid we run out of black. What can I get if I mix these colors to get black? Or what appears to be black. Burnt sienna. Or I want a burgundy. What am I going to have to mix to get a burgundy? Alright, so if I... Up here, I'm just going to use abbreviations. Green gold, cad yellow light, cad orange, pyrrol, I'm going to red, quinacridone magenta, primary cyan, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. Okay, now I'm ready to paint. Now, the next thing I want to do is get my paints in the order. So I'm going to mix it with white eventually. So I'm going to put some white down here, over here. Hopefully I won't run my hand through it. And that's just Amsterdam because it's easy for me to grab. My other white is in a big giant gallon jug. So now I'm going to put in some green gold. And I'm only going to put in a little bit because I don't, I don't want to waste it for one because this stuff is really pigmented. Number two, I don't know how much I'm going to need, so I'd rather add more later. There's my Cad Yellow Light Hue. Cadmium Orange Hue. Pyro Red. Quinacridone Magenta. I'm really anxious to use this. This is such a pretty color. These might be really close. Actually, this looks like this is more towards the red bias color. Mm, no, I'm going to say it goes towards the green so that it will be yellow biased. 
you know how when someone um, has their skin tone colorized and they find out whether they are uh, spring, summer, winter, or fall? Well, those four categories run into cools and warm, just like when you're going uh, looking at the at the color wheel. And I don't, I can't find my color wheel. I did find my poster, but it's too big. I can't show that to you. Now we need a flat brush and lots of water because we're going to have to do a lot of rinsing. So I'm just going to dip my brush in the water and I'm going to wipe it out. I don't want, I don't want any water as far as, I'm just moistening the brush so the brush doesn't leach up the paint, all the paint up. This is going to be my two parts or my dominant. So I'm going to put this right here and I'm going to run it right over that black marker that I put on. Did I tell you that? I used a really fat marker. And the reason why I used this big bold line is a, another purpose of mine. I want to find out how transparent it is. If I can see the black line through there, it's either transparent or semi-transparent. And we'll see that as we go along. And now we're going to do the yellow. We're just filling up our chart right now. So, so far I've got green and yellow. Isn't that pretty? Rinse your brush out really well between colors. Now here's my Grumbacher orange. Grumbacher. is less transparent than the green gold. The yellow is less transparent than the green gold. I have a feeling that if I got a thicker body green gold, it might be different, but I'm working with what I got. Wash my brush. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm off camera, I'm going to finish these colors. Oh, I drank water. And then I'm going to come back and I'll show you how to do this first row. Okay, I'm back. I got them all in. Ha ha! Are you ready for the fun part? I rinsed my brush and I've moved my this cup of water over because it's dirty. And you want to have lots of clean water because you're going to have to do a lot of mixing, a lot of rinsing. All right, so now... Let's see here. Let me take the green gold and cad yellow light. So I'm going to scoop up a whole brush worth of paint and I'm going to put it right here. And now I'm going to just take in just half, half of the brush. Are you in a race to do this? I'm not. I just want to play and see what I get with two parts paint adding one part of another color. All right, now while that's still wet, I'm going to come in and I'm going to do the same thing with the white, one part white. And I'm going to kind of mix it in with the paint on the canvas to see what color I get. And you can run this right across the first one too if you want. It doesn't matter. I just want to see what it looks like with a little bit of yellow and a one part white. And now I'm going to take my green gold get it loaded with one part paint and I'm going to do cadmium orange the same way load up just half the brush now you have to remember this is a hue so I don't really know what's in there again A little bit of white, mix that right in. And when you're doing across the board 
Um, Grumbacher is going to be different than, say, if Liquitex has cadmium yet orange um, hue, what's in theirs. You don't know. So you have to play with your own paint. And then you know exactly what you're going to get every time you use Grumbacher Cat Orange with Green Gold from Golden's. And this, I love this. This is so much fun. Another green. Pyro Red. Just halfway in. This is kind of pretty. Look at that. Oh my, wouldn't that make a gorgeous sunset? Got a really pretty peachy color. Cool. So far I'm liking this green gold. Pretty. These would make really cool accent colors on the sky and reflection in the water. All right, so now I'm going to shut up and I'm going to speed through a couple rows here and then we'll come back and talk. Okay guys, I made a mistake. I forgot to add my green gold right here. So we're going to add green gold right there. Okay, I messed up again. <laughs> this goes down here we're going to dry that really quick we're going to paint it white again now I can't paint it over my black because then I won't be able to get the, I won't be able to see what will happen 
when I add white to the actual color. Okay, I'm going to take a break. When you take white paint and you add it to the color down here, like this, this is what you, is called tinting. White paint, you tint. Gray paint, you tone. And if you add black to paint, you're shading, just in case you forgot that. And if you don't say the right thing on the internet, <laughs> who cares? I don't. I'm just trying to teach you what I know. I'm teaching you as I teach myself what these colors do to each other. I actually, I, I like all of these colors so far. Would I use them in a pour? No, but that's why I'm doing this. Because if I don't want to get this color or this color or um, this color, can you see the difference between green gold and primary cyan and cad yellow light and primary cyan? This is a little darker. When you're doing paint pours and you want to get three shades in, you want a light, medium, and a dark. You don't want the variance to be so close 
like these two here or these two here, you're not going to see the difference when you pour. Now, that's not to say what happens if you mix, you know, pour this to, next to this. You're still probably going to come out with this. Because when it mixes on the, the canvas or your substrate, whatever your substrate is, depending on the thickness of the paint, the consistency, if it's on the low viscosity side, it'll mix. If it's on the high viscosity side, or thicker paint like it look at this this is a thicker paint this is a less this is I would say this is more soft body and these are heavy bodies that's a soft body soft body paints are gonna be less viscous than the heavy body paints because they are more fluid they, they run faster viscous just means how how slow does it run or fast, depending on what your, you know, your mindset is at the moment. And I tell you guys, I'm going to do this again, but only after I figure out what colors I really like, because I want to invest in good quality paints so that I don't, but how do I put this? I want an expected result. And if I just go out and buy a bunch of paints, um, liquid tech basics. Oh, I love this color. Oh, I love this color. Oh, I love this color. Uh, is that what you guys do? That's what I do. Some paints like oh, deco art and folk art, they're good paints, um, but they have less pigment than these higher quality paints. These will go farther because you can add more pouring medium. And depending on your pouring medium, I basically use Flowchol, um, but I am going to try the GAC 800. Um, and I want to check it per ounce. But Floetrol, if, if you can get it for $15 a gallon, uh, it comes out to what? 10 to 15 cents per ounce? As opposed to deco art or folk art, you have to mix that one part paint to one part Floetrol. So you're not really saving a whole lot of money. And I've never really done the numbers, but... I just want a good quality paint with a very high pigment. I want to create a chart. Once I actually find the colors that I love. And then just buy those 10 colors all the time. And then I can mix whatever I want. This chart can be a 2 to 1 ratio. Well, I can do another chart with a 3 to 1 ratio or one-to-one -one ratio. Do you understand what I'm saying? I can create all kinds of charts. Cadmium orange and cadmium yellow light hue with just one part of yellow gives me this. What if I wanted to do four parts yellow or four parts orange with one part yellow? What color would that give me? And this is going to be a 2 to 1 ratio. So now I have this chart. When I get it all done, I'll know exactly what color I'm going for. And when I mix them in my cup, I'm going to put them both in the cup, stir them up, because I want to see what color I'm getting. If I'm not If I'm not getting this color, or if I'm not getting this color that I want, I know that I, if it's too light or too dark, I need to add more green gold or more of the primary cyan. You see what I'm saying? Now, I don't know if you can see the difference between just one part paint and then just a little bit of the cyan yellow and then just a little bit of one more uh, part of the, the cadmium orange. Oh, I shoot, I forgot to do the white. Hopefully that's still wet. I don't know, what I'm saying is, I don't know if this is picking up on camera, but I can see a difference. This is more saturated than that. This is less saturated than that because 
I added a, just a hint of the cyan yellow. Or cadmium yellow. Am I saying cyan? Ugh. This is so much fun! Now look at that! Look at that! That is so close to the pyro red. Let's say you only have cat orange and quadacrinone magenta. And you but you want this cad red light or py pyro red pyro 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. Okay, this is a primary example of what I was talking about when I said mixing red and blue to get purple and all you get is a dirty gray or a muddy gray. You know you don't, if you want something vibrant, you don't want to add that to your paint, to your pouring list. It's a pretty color, just not for pouring. This would be great as a background for a forest of trees uh, when you want, when you're doing, if you, if you paint with a paintbrush on the canvas. The background is muted and your foreground is vibrant. It brings the eye. Um, just go look at all kinds of landscape pictures, um, photographs even. The background is more dull and muted because it is a dis, it is your eye perceives through the light refracting, blah, blah, blah. It perceives it as far, far away. And then as you get closer and closer and closer, the colors become more vibrant and vibrant and vibrant, which makes a two-dimensional object look three-dimensional. Okay, enough blathering. Let's finish this color here. Okay, I'm going to continue doing this and I will meet you back at the end. Okay, I've got them. I've got all my colors done. Look at the vibrancy of all of these colors. Now, would you use all of these colors to pour with? Maybe. Maybe not. But what I want to talk about is I mentioned skin tones and how you go and get your skin tone colorized to find out if you're a warm or a cool color and they'll categorize you in uh, summer, winter, 
fall or spring. And that just basically means, are you on the cool side, meaning there's more blue undertones on your skin or more yellow? I'm more yellow, so I look better in gold. If I were to put silver on, it would just kind of look bland because I have a yellow undertone, which means my skin is warm. And I am a spring, actually. So I can wear mauves, but I can't wear hot pink because a mauve is on the yellow tone or it has less blues in it. Hot pink has lots of blues in it. So that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, Cad Yellow Light. Here, I'm just going to get three colors out. All right, I've got Cad Yellow Light Hue. Cad Yellow Deep Hue. And I've got a Cad Yellow Deep Hue that's also a Grumbacher. Now you can tell really quickly that between paint companies... These yellows are not exactly the same. This one is still got, this one has a little more orange in it. So if I'm looking at these three colors, which one is the coolest? Going on the color wheel, the color wheel goes yellow at the top, around to the red, to the purples, to the blues, and to the greens. All right? So here's my yellows. This is at the top of the scale. So this is going to be the coolest because it's going towards the blue and then it gets warmer and warmer because it goes towards the red. I'm going to say that this is blue biased and this is red biased because it's going that way on the color wheel. So the further away you get from red, the cooler that yellow is even though yellows are all warm categorized but if you think of it as biased colors and you see these three together you're going to say okay light medium dark this is biased blue and this is biased red so this is cooler than that okay so what I did was I took Two yellows but basically it was an, an orange just because I wanted to have that in this chart I wanted to get a full range I wanted to find out what greens I could make with these colors I wanted to find out what purples I could make with these colors so here's my pyro red and here's my primary cyan and that made a really dark, muted purple. It's a gr almost a gray purple. So if I wanted to put that in a pour as, a, as one of the deep colors, I could do that. Here's my quinacridone magenta. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say here's my ultramarine blue. And that's a pretty purple. This is a pretty purple. It's also primary cyan and quinacridone magenta. This is primary cyan, one part to, to two parts quinacridone magenta. This is a gorgeous purple. This is almost a bluish purple. This is another gorgeous purple. It's got almost, um, oh, it's a lot, oh, like a red violet almost. There's not one ugly color in this bunch. I love them all. I also learned how to get a gorgeous, really deep green. I can do it two different ways, three different ways. But what, that's the reason why I wanted to add the burnt sienna and burnt umber. Was to find out what colors I could get with these 10 core colors. And then by adding the white tint, we're tinting it to see if we lighten it up what colors will we get? So you, I've got 200 colors to choose from here in this palette. Now, if I wanted to do this with a, a yellow mediums, the cad reds, I could go back and add a cad red, light, medium, deep. I could do a chart for every one of those, add some of the same colors. I could introduce 
Thalo blue, because Thalo blue is such a popular color. I could introduce Prussian blue. I could do this just in tones where, okay, I want to do all my yellows that I've got. I want to do all my oranges that I've got, all my reds, all my blues. I could even do the purples that I've got. I've got dioxazine purple. It is amazing that I got such pretty colors with just these 10 core colors. So I could essentially save myself hundreds of dollars from going out and buying a tube of this, a tube of that. Oh, that's a pretty color. I can make my own pretty colors depending on what I want to achieve in my pour. I also found that if I do an acrylic painting, a traditional using a paintbrush, I got background colors that are just amazing. These browns here, this brown. Um, these two colors would make great mountains. But just, I'm amazed at how gorgeous and rich these colors are. I hope you guys do this. Will you do this? Make this a challenge for yourself? Give yourself time. Give yourself permission to sit down. Pick 10 of your favorite colors that you like working with. Put them all down here and make a dominant. You don't have to do two to one. Let's say you want to do one to one. Just get your brush, dip it in the paint. Get it on your, your palette. Dip in the next color that you want to mix it with. And then put it on your chart. It's just, this was so meditative and so relaxing and so fun to sit and see, okay, what color am I going to get? I, you know, I knew some of them I was going to get a certain shade. I'm guaranteed. But to mix a, a light red, which was the pyrrol pyro red and primary cyan. I had no idea I was going to get that muddy gray, grayish purple. This is, a, this is dark. It's very pretty. Again, would I put it in a pour? I don't know. It depends. If I used pearl medium or added some mica powders to it, because see how transparent this is? That mica, pow mica, mica, mica powders would show through in there. So if you don't want to, you don't have to do the white if you don't want to. And then you'll only have 100 colors to choose from. But I wanted to do the white to see what kind of tint would I get if I added white. I just love these colors. I'm so impressed. And they didn't match. None of this stuff matches. It's all different brands. Sit and play. Get your mind off of the media and what's going on in the world just for a few minutes to clear your mind because I know lots of people are really really struggling right now coming from years and years of depression fighting it and battling it trying prescription drugs and realizing that that just makes me into a zombie and I can't think and so I have dealt with my depression myself but I've learned techniques that get me to stop looking at my depression and focusing on something other than what's going on internally. Is it easy? No, heck no, it's not easy. But there are ways to get around it. And does it doesn't happen instantaneously. It's, you know, sometimes days, sometimes weeks, sometimes months. Depends on what death I'm in when I'm in my depression. And I've just learned that it's part of my personality I am a sanguine and a melancholy. I'm split right down the middle. So there are times when I'm going to go on that roller coaster ride and I just learn to deal with it. Now, is everybody like that? I don't know. I, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a therapist. I just know what works for me. And I hope that you will be inspired to try to do this and make a journal out of it. I've got another chart here ready to go because I want to do some with some um, medium tones. I want to add thalo blue to my color mix to see what happens between ultra blue and thalo blue. The pandemic is what media is calling it. It's such a, a focus on everybody right now. I just wanted to give you something to try to do something outside of just sitting and thinking about it, worrying about it. It happens. We'll get through it. We always do, right? 
from my heart to yours. I hope you do this and that it gives you some peace of mind for even if it's just for an hour or two. I want to teach you what I know and what I, and I want to teach you as I learn because this was really fun. I've done color charts where I take my if I get a kit I invested in this box of pencils. I have always wanted to have pencils that I could use on paper, wood, fabric, and just by adding um, a medium, it works great. But what I did was, here's all my pencils. The colors are pretty cool. Uh, this was a lot of money, I, I do admit, um, but it is a very high quality product. But what, anyways, what I was going to say was, when I bought this, I got a piece of watercolor paper and I did color swatches of every pencil that I have so that I know okay uh, let's see here cadmium orange 250 so if I go up to 250 do you see how the pencil and what actually happens when you add water they don't quite match so it's really important to and especially if you go by what he, what's here. What, was this the 250? Yes. This is an even bigger example. This is what I was saying earlier about how the colors that they show on the packaging does not always match what you're going to get. So you always want to do a color chart. At least of the basic of the colors that you get. So, with that said, I hope you guys were entertained. I hope you were inspired to do this. Uh, please, please give it a try because this was so relaxing for me. I really enjoyed doing this. And if I could spend another two, three hours down here, I would do another chart and another chart. <laughs> it was just a lot of fun. I want to do a one-to-one -one ratio of the same exact color chart. To see how much more vibrant maybe this green gold is amongst all these other colors. I love this color. I'm going to start buying, with a coupon of course, one bottle a month until I get my core colors built up that I want. I want real cadmium. I don't want, you know, I don't want to heal because I don't know what's in here. I want predictability. So if I know that the paint company has sold me cad yellow light cad red light and the same with medium and deep then i'll know what i'm gonna get with that product i'll use less paint because this is so highly pigmented i can add more floetrol which is cheaper by the ounce so i rambled on enough i really appreciate you guys visiting me today i so had fun and let me know in your comments what you think what colors are you gonna try i or if you're even going to do this, like, subscribe, comment, share, please. I, I love hearing from you. I've gotten so many wonderful comments from all of you lovely people. I just can't get over how I get so blessed when I get a comment from you guys. Check out the description box for my affiliate links. If you go to Amazon and shop for any of these products, and if you use that link, I'll get a, a, a small commission at no extra cart charge to you. Thank you again. We'll see you next time. Love you. Bye-bye.